Hi. Today's topic of conversation is communication. We're going to look at communication within the context of marketing, marketing communication, advertising, and so on. And then we will move on to looking at it within digital media world. But be before doing that, uh, communication is, in, in effect, something which you, from the day you are born, you would be dealing with it. Uh, first, not verbally, with your mom, looking around and start taking the images, the facial impressions of the, mo the mother and father. Uh, word by word, you would be taught and you will learn, and the first word you come out with is uh, mommy or daddy or McDonald or something like that, Big Mac. And it will develop, and uh, we will learn how to communicate. Communication is actually what defines human beings, what our intensity in our, the way we communicate, the complexity of it. That's what makes different the, 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 the human being from the rest of the animal world. Human being, if you go back and look at it within the history of its development, you will see that our advancement in the world is, has been sort of parallel with our ability to communicate better. Imagine the, the primitive man uh, gradually learning to communicate, probably before verbal communication, uh, images came, the cave drawings. We don't know which one came first, but uh, certainly language was developed, the way to convey our messages to each other, to let the others to understand what we mean, and gradually, we moved into the visual ones, and then the, the full languages were developed, the speeches, the writing came in, and we, we start writing books and passing the messages rather than our know-how to our next generation, rather than in a way of just telling each other in books. Then the printing press came, so it became more available. So people start reading more books, and our knowledge and know-how and history was passed on a lot faster and easier. And if you look at it, then we move on to telegraphs coming in, then the radio and TVs, and, and up to now, where we've got mobile phones and the many ways of communicating with each other, and social networks, and when you look at the human advancement or the technologies, you will see is within our ability, as our ability to communicate became stronger and we became more complex, our other advancement came with it. So communication is something we, we, as I said, it defines human being. We all communicate the one way or another. Some of us do it better. Some of us are more effective. Now, when we were going to look at, later on, we're going to look at the communication process within the advertising and promotion. It's no, no difference. If you look at the, your friends, some of them can tell a story better, can tell a joke better, can pass, uh, convey the message a lot more clearer. Uh, same, same we will see it in advertising. Uh, some of it is to do with techniques, definitely. You can improve your communication by uh, doing a specific courses and looking at actually what you're saying and uh, what you mean and what the receiver, the, the recipient of your uh, message is understanding. Uh, it, it, within human uh, communication process, you will see a lot of misunderstanding. You will see a friend, you say something and they get upset, and you didn't mean it, but obviously they took it in a different way. So uh, one of the problems with the communication is the message we want to send and the way we send it not necessarily would be received by the recipient in the same way. So we've got to be very careful what we say and how we say it and making sure the recipient is going to get the right information, what we meant, not something else. Now, let's move on to the talk of today, which is a communication process within advertising and marketing and promotion. To <clears throat> We, we, we are all subject to advertising and different kind of messages, commercial messages coming to us via TV, radio, on our mobile phones coming, on the internet, wherever you go, you will see these things popping up. So 
uh, everybody is familiar with these kind of commercial messages coming. Now, they always come within a context. The sender has got some idea. They want to send it. Now, that can be within a cultural context or physical context or uh, chronological context. So th th there is a setting which the sender, the person who wants to send the message or the advertiser, uh, would set it, and they feel that that context would uh, be the best environment to convey the message to, to the user. Well, let, let's say if you're doing a perfume advertising, obviously you want to have a, a certain uh, surrounding which is inducive uh, to using perfume. Uh, if you are advertising a drink, obviously you will set it within the context of being thirsty and uh, so it will induce the user to think about thirst and drinking something. So that's the context which we will set and within the context the sender, the person who is advertising or sending a message, uh, a, a marketing director or an advertising agency, would s define its message. We call it encoding. Uh, putting it in the words, images, uh, motion pictures, whatever it is, where that message can be sent to your recipient. Uh, let's say I'm selling a soft drink. We will look at an advert about that later on. Uh, so I want to tell my audience, uh, my target audience, drink it. Now, I have to set a context for it, which would in induce them to decide to go and buy it and drink it. We will look at an example on that. that that's, we, we are encoding our message not just by words, not just by action, is a totality of the whole, the, the whole ensemble of this thing, the, the, the context, the setting, the motion, the messages, the, the music, the way the actors act, the age of the actors, the whole demographic of it, everything comes within that encoding of our message. And we hope we will pass that message Via a channel, obviously we, we need to, um, let's say it's a TV advert or is a s advert going to in a cinema or maybe a print going into a magazine or a, an outdoor advertising, can be a billboard, uh, a number of different ways we can go, obviously internet advertising, which we're going to look at that in more details in the second part of this talk. So that's, that's your, the, the channel, the media channel, the message channel, the channel which we are conveying the message to the recipient. Now, the recipient is, we call him a decoder, the person who is watching that advert, who is reading that newspaper or ma reading a magazine or driving by that billboard and they're gonna look at that uh, message which you have sent and decode it. That means their, their perceived value. What did they get? Did they get our message or did they get something else? Now, that's crucial because we want the majority of our recipient, our audience, to get the message we are sending. Now, to make sure you are, uh, your receivers, your customers are decoding your message in the right manner is by getting a feedback system. Uh, my, you, know, uh, you can get a sample of a typical audience and ask them what did you feel about it, what do you think the message was, and you know, fine tune your message in the best possible way. So that's, that's in, in, in a simple term, starting from setting a context uh, for a mar marketer would set a context which they want to advertise or promote their uh, product. They would uh, define their message. They would encode it by using uh, obviously the words and images and uh, music and all the, su the surrounding of that advert, being print or TV or whatever, radio. Uh, they choose a channel, uh, they can use a multi-channel or whatever, and then they send the message. Obviously, they pay for the advertising cost of it, the media people, and, uh, and hopefully the, the audience would be watching it. Now, within that, there are lots of other things which we have looked at it before, uh, how we choose a channel. is obviously depends to our demographic and market segmentation. Again, the same demographic and market segmentation would affect what the message would be and what the context of the message is. And hopefully, that channel would reach our audience, our target audience, and they would decode the message in the right manner. 
Now, that's it. We will look at an advert later on, and we'll see all these elements within that advert in a minute. Uh, <clears throat> we will be looking at a TV advert, but it's the same thing. Uh, you've got a radio, it's a different medium, so you're going to use different techniques for it. Uh, newspapers and glossy magazines, obviously they, 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 you don't have any voice or uh, moving image, so it's a bit more complex sometimes to tell the message. Uh, you got the exhibition, cinemas, exhibition, outdoor direct marketing, you know, junk mail you get and uh, would people throw it out immediately or the message is so strong which will get them to think a bit about it. Now, one thing about the whole process. We talked about communication, but when we come to advertising and uh, marketing and advertising and promotion, the time and the space is expensive. You have got a limited amount of time to convey your message. Your TV advert, it would be anything between 15 seconds to 30 seconds. And it's not just the money. The other issue is the time span of your audience. They're not going to sit down and listen, you know, 20 minutes about your drink. You know, they, they're not going to give you that luxury. So you have to convey your message within that limited time, being a TV advert or a page in a magazine or a small advert in a newspaper. So that makes it so complex. That makes it, uh, that coding of your message and using all possible tools you have got. Uh, if it's a print in a magazine, the image obviously become crucial to grasp the uh, user attention. Your uh, main message on the top or the, the key message you're putting in is it has to hold them on that page so they read a bit more so, and it has to be engaging. Same with the TV advert. I look at it, I go and you know, put the kettle on. You want to get me to stand there and watch it and you know uh, see what's the message. It, so one thing you have to remember that is the issue with the time and the space, both with regard to the cost and the span of attention of your audience. Now we're going to look at this advert. The, the advert is for a soft drink, Sprite, and uh, you will see the message is not much of a talk on it, it's a music, the music starts playing, and uh, the, the product the, the, the brand is immediate, so they don't waste any time. They, you can see that, uh, as you can see it on the background, that uh, you can see the sprite. And uh, in the 30 seconds of this ad, you will uh, see that the whole design of this ad, the whole the, the, this scenario here is being different, not being one of the kind. And I think the message is very strong. And why they have chosen this message, the message is very simple, I think, because obviously you've got the two dominant players in the soft drink industry. One is Coca-Cola and the other one is Pepsi-Cola. And is to grab a bit more of the market share from them is not an easy job to do. So Sprite is going, not going for kill the market, get the Pepsi or Coke uh, market share, but they want to just edge it, take a bit of it. And they say, you want to be different, drink Sprite. And, hope, and you can see the demographic of it is a young people. They're going for, a, uh, I think, 17, 18 to 22 years old. Gender is not important. They're going for male and female. And they are emphasizing the message is drink a Sprite and be different. I let you to watch that. And uh, then I will come back and we discuss about using the digital media, the internet as the main channel and how we can obviously work on those channels rather than the traditional channels. See you later.